Crescent Petroleum is the oldest private uh, oil and gas company uh, in the Middle East, headquartered in Sharjah and the UAE, and now in our fifth decade of operations. So one thing that's been talked about a lot here and in every energy conference in the world is what's happened in the U.S. in recent years and the revolution in shale oil and shale gas, adding production the size of Iraq just in a few years. Uh, and that has all been led by the private sector. The U.S. government doesn't invest in oil and gas. Uh, and uh, I think the lessons to be learned for our region where we've actually lost production capacity in many co countries uh, in the region. Now, we, our issues are not cost of production, our issues are above the ground. Uh, of course, security, and, and, uh, but also the, the, the regulatory regimes that don't give the right incentives for upstream investment. In many major resource holders in the region, there is no space for the private sector. Um, in Mexico, for example, that used to be the case. They changed their constitution to open up more for the private sector. So I think there is much more potential in our region and government state budgets are under strain because of lower oil prices and rising populations with social welfare needs. So now is the time really to open up more for the private sector. That doesn't mean the governments lose control. We're not talking about privatization like what happened in Russia after 91. What we're talking about is the government still gets you know, the vast majority, 90 plus percent of the revenues, but it plays the role as the regulator, uh, an organizer, uh, and revenue maximizer, instead of actually playing the role of uh, monopoly manager of the assets. So we've seen, as we've heard today, this is the first time you've had se several years in a row with almost no new upstream uh, ENP investment. It's the, it's the lowest level relatively for like 70 years, I think we heard today from executive director of the IEA. And that's concerning because there is still growth in oil demand every year, one to two million barrels a day. Plus, we lose four or five million barrels a, uh, per day annually in capacity because of natural decline rates. So we do need to keep investing. And that's just not happening uh, at the moment. And that potentially could lead to volatility and price spike towards the end of the decade if we're not careful. Egypt's an important area of operations uh, for Danagas. We're the uh, sixth largest gas producer there. We've invested over $2 billion uh, through an acquisition and also capital investment in the last 10 years in the country. It's a big domestic market, of course. There were at one time multiple export schemes. We've had very good operational results, in particular in the last year, in terms of adding to the reserve base uh, and with some uh, successes and expansion of operations and exploration. The challenge in Egypt, however, as is well publicized, is in receivables. The industry is still owed a lot of money by the Egyptian government, in our case close to $300 million. Uh, and despite uh, commitments from the Egyptian government to pay that down, uh, it's been slow in coming and it has hampered the rate of investment. So Iraq is a huge potential uh, going forward. It's the fastest rising oil producer in, in OPEC second highest reserves for, for oil in the Middle East, in my view, could well be the highest actually once the export, because it's vastly underexplored. Uh, we've had a presence in country for over 25 years, uh, engaging with, with the government. We've been producing gas and, and liquids in the Kurdistan region as the biggest investor and producer there uh, since 2007, eight when, eight when we started uh, the, the production. And we've proven up reserves that can more than meet domestic needs as well as export for Turkey and onwards uh, to Europe. And we have a consortium that involves major European utility companies from Germany, Austria uh, and Hungary. We've also pre-qualified, as you said, uh, with the Federal Ministry of Oil uh, in, in Baghdad. And we're actively looking at uh, potential uh, opportunities to partner with them in the south uh, of the country.
So Rata, we, we pursued actively in the 90s. We finalized the contract. We know the field well. We had a full development plan. We didn't sign then because of sanctions. Um, it's one of the fields that we're certainly looking at. We recognize there are negotiations going on with the consortium you mentioned. We're not part of that. They're talking about a much bigger, multi-dimensional approach, looking at water treatment and, and, and refinery and all a part of one big package. Quite complicated. Uh, our understanding is progress has been slow in moving that forward. And the expectations are not necessarily aligned uh, in terms of the budget and how much the government is supposed to uh, refund. So that's not a conversation that we're part of, but we are looking at multiple uh, fields in different parts of the country and engaging with the federal oil ministry and its related companies on those. We're the only producer of, of gas and our this is all public also, uh, Dana Gas has made it public. Uh, it's been third party certified that we have proven 2P reserves of 15 trillion cubic feet of gas uh, and potential resources in place of 75 trillion cubic feet. That dwarfs uh, any other, I mean these are the two largest gas fields in Iraq without exception uh, and world class assets. Unfortunately, we had this dispute uh, with the KRG since 2009, which held back further development. So we're doing about 3, 3.1 BCM a year at the moment. Uh, we could be doing several times that. Uh, and now, luckily, those rights have been clarified through the arbitration process. Uh, and, you know, the old restrictions on drilling and developing those assets have been removed. We of course have a backlog of payments uh, you know, and we need to find a solution with the KRG for that, but there's a good dialogue going on with the KRG. Our, our focus as a regional company is first make sure you cover domestic needs and there are significant domestic needs in Kurdistan region as well as the rest of Iraq. Industry as well, and we have our gas city model for how to develop local industry. And there are already local industries that need gas, cement plants, and others, and then any surplus for export. But we can move quickly. We pride ourselves on an ability to understand the commercial needs, the local market, and engage with other industries to move quickly on all of those fronts in parallel. And ultimately, it's about maximizing the value for the gas. Uh, which the majority of that revenue goes to the government. And according to the Iraqi constitution, the revenue is supposed to be shared by all the people of Iraq based on the population uh, split. So it's potentially a win-win for everybody, as well as potential export markets in Turkey and beyond.